Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode here on African Confessions. The following story that you're going to be listening to, it was sent to me by one of our dear sister who received this message. The message, it reads like this. If anyone had told me about a decade ago that this was what was going to happen to me, I was never going to believe it. Standing here today confessing to the darkest secret of my life. I come from a very small township here in South Africa where I grew up in a religious family. We did not have much but we had faith. My parents worked really hard always reminding me to put God first in each and everything that I was doing. I did everything right or at least I thought I did but sometimes the path that you choose to walk is not as straightforward as you can imagine. When I was accepted into a Bible school in America, because this was sort of like a refresher course that I wanted to take there in America, it felt like a dream come true. I was the first in my family to ever travel abroad, to abroad and everyone was so proud. They saw me as the hope of our community, the one who would come back with wisdom and bring change. I had every intention of fulfilling that role. I planned to come back and to start even a bigger church, to get out of the church where I was pastoring because I had some problems with the doctrine. I felt as if the doctrine was too tough on people because I felt that people can have fun and still return back to God. I did not want to preach a gospel where God was always the one punishing people. He had to be a good guy, not this angry guy in the heavens. And I wanted to get out of the church that had made me to become a pastor. Bible, Bible school in America was everything I had hoped it would be. The classes were enlightening and I met people from all over the world who shared my passion for ministry. But I, but I soon realized that not everyone there was focused on God as I was. I encountered students who had very different ideas about spirituality. They would talk about things I had never even heard of, concepts that went beyond the teachings of the Bible. One evening, after a particularly intense lecturer, that was when I met Daniel, not his real name, he was a fellow student, but way older than I was. But there was something about him that was really captivating. Something about him that made me want to listen even more to him. As for Daniel, he was someone who was liked by everyone. He was charismatic, intelligent, and he seemed to have a deep understanding of spiritual matters. He had a way of talking that made you feel like he held the secrets of the universe. We became close friends, often spending hours debating about theology and the nature of good and evil. After a few months, Daniel started to introduce me to his friends, people who were older and more sophisticated than anyone else at the school. They had a certain spiritualness that they had about them, as if they knew things that no one else did. They were always well-dressed, always speaking in low voices about things that I could not even understand. They invited me to their gatherings, which they called little studied groups, but they felt like something more. It was during one of these gatherings that I first heard the term Illuminati. I had heard the word before back home, usually in passing with people talking about conspiracy theories. I never took it seriously. But here among these people, it was discussed as if it was something that was really important. They talked about the Illuminati as a society of enlightened individuals who had transcended ordinary understanding. They spoke of hidden knowledge, of power beyond comprehension, and I found myself intrigued. I remember asking Daniel about it, like it a later. I remember asking Daniel about it later. He just smiled and he was like, you are not ready yet, he said, but I was desperate to know. My curiosity had gotten the better of me and I found myself wanting to understand what they were talking about. 
The more I pressed, the more he shared, until eventually he told me about an initiation. It is just a ritual, he explained, nothing more than a way to open up your mind. You are learning to be a pastor, right? Think of it as baptism into a higher understanding. That was what he told me. This was some sort of a weird baptism that I was supposed to go through. I should have walked away, but I did not. I was young, and I felt like I had stumbled upon some hidden knowledge because he was telling me about some books of the Bible that most of the people did not even understand, some things that would give me answers that the Bible never could. The night of the initiation was unlike anything that I had ever experienced. We were in a large room, dimly lit with symbols and strange artifacts that made the, fell, the place feel really old. I was nervous, but Danielle assured me it was all part of the process. I don't remember everything from that night, only fragments. There were chants in a language that sounded like Latin. I did not understand symbols drawn in the air and a sense of something overwhelming and washing over me. By the end of it, I felt different. I could not explain, but something inside of me had shifted. From that point, things in my life changed. I found myself more confident, more persuasive, and people seemed to, to be drawn to me in ways that they had never been before. It was not just people, opportunities. I was then introduced to different financial clubs where they can give you financial aid, loan, even though you do not even have a good credit rating, connections in high places and friends from all over the world that are also part of the secret society. So when I returned back home, that was when I had a dream and indeed in that dream I saw an angel and this angel said that you cannot serve two masters. I was supposed to make a decision but I chose to serve the other master because soon after that dream that was when I started to think about it and I said is it not far much better that I serve this one that is trying to give me a better opportunity for I was told that if I was going to serve the devil and if I was going to indeed introduce the doctrine that I wanted to introduce so much when I was still in that other church then everything that I had ever desired it was going to be given to me your fast cars beautiful homes and even having anything that you want in this world that is what was promised to me and after that dream that was when i saw myself i was standing at this other place where there were two roads i chose the other road for i knew that it was the road that was going to lead me to the master whom i am serving right now i have it all i do not want to lie and i did what i did because i felt like the doctrine that so many pastors have been giving to the people for many generation this is what has caused the christians to be lukewarm because they are those that might be facing their own challenges in life they do not want the pastor to judge them when they come to church rather they want a pastor who will be so loving when the past when you come to church you want a pastor who can tell you that even though you are a sinner but still god love you we do not want pastors that will judge those that are still in sin when they try to come to church for my belief is that as long as a sinner keeps on coming to church in time that sinner will be right in time that sinner will be in the right standing with the lord dear listeners right there was a message that was sent to me by one of our sister who received that message strange things indeed they do happen in this world. Yeah.